curtains for Kyle Busch. They had a man go over the wall without a fire suit and helmet. It is a one-lap infraction in ARCA REMAX Series competition, something you would not expect from the GMAC Nextel Cup team crewing the 87 car here today. Ray Dunlap. Well, Don, up front, you see Greg Sachs's number 88, sponsored by George Foreman Grill. These guys are very happy about the way this race car has been performing, but they knew that they could not come in and pit that time and make it on one stop. They want to try to do this with one stop. You'll notice right behind them is Shane Meal's car. These guys have been communicating back and forth, and they said, we think Meal's car might be a little bit faster. So don't be surprised if you see the 88 pull over and let Meal go ahead. They believe those two cars might be able to draft away from the pack. Lindsay? Thanks, Ray. Just talked to Bill Venturini, Billy's crew chief. They say number 25 came in. They topped off fuel, made a little bit of a chassis adjustment because it was still a little too tight, sent him back out. Now they're excited about their new track position. Back to you guys. There's Billy Venturini in the Melling cylinder sleeves. Number 25 will have more from Daytona when we come back. It's like the old White Snake song. Here we go again. Green flag for the Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200 for the Arca Remax Series. And Greg Sachs is the man out front, but Shane Meal is on his tail. Uh, definitely uh, Shane Meal is on his tail, but Kurt Bush, or Kyle Bush is the third car in line, and he wants his lap back, and I think his car is strong enough to get it back. He's got to be in front of that leader when that yellow comes out so he can get back into this race. And that's all that racing luck that all the drivers want all the time. If he gets out front, he needs that. He most definitely does. Shane Meal returning to racing in the ARCA Remax Series here at Daytona. Greg Sachs just in front, and there's a contrast of ages right there. Shane Meal, one of those young guys. And Greg Sachs, one of the seasoned veterans. Keith Mert back out on the racetrack. But here we go, the young and the restless. Let's see what everybody's doing. Shane Neal second. Menard, he's been up front, back to 14th. And uh, Christy Passmore had some trouble. Brian Hemphill, though, we saw him twice come down pit road and overshot his pit both times. Right. Well, that's just an experience deal. The reason Paul Menard's 14th is because I believe he's the first car that pitted. So he's got a whole tank of fuel, which could come into big play later if these guys don't catch that, uh, uh, catch another yellow within their fuel window. What's up, X-Ray? Bob, most people are aware that Shane Meal was suspended from NASCAR competition late last year. However, he came here to the ARCA race to say, look, guys, I can drive these race cars. Everything's cool. And he has not only gotten his clearance from the ARCA Remax series, but also been reinstated to get a NASCAR license. He will compete in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series here next Friday, driving the number 15 for Billy Ballou. Also believe he will be attempting to be in the Bush race. So Shane Meal has his NASCAR license back as well as his ARCA license. Only one prior start for Shane Meal in the ARCA Remax Series back in 2001 at Atlanta led 14 laps and finished second to Kerry Earnhardt. Well, I think he's gonna, gonna try to stay in line there. Uh, Bush gets his lap back. He wants to be second in line, but we'll just have to wait and see. But he's bringing a pretty good group with him there. You know, we heard a pit report earlier that Greg Sachs might pull over and let Shane Meal go by, but Greg is really taking off. Yeah, it uh, looks like Greg's car is a little faster. First, uh, of course, he's also got Kyle Busch pushing him, which uh, is helping him quite a bit. And this other group's running side by side, so it'll uh, be interesting to see what uh, how this all plays out. Wait a second. You're going almost 200 miles an hour here. How can you push somebody? Well, I'll tell you what, in, in uh, Bud shootout practice last night, they, they sure didn't seem to have, have no problem doing it. You can hit them down the straightaway, plus you just uh, push the air and just pack the air in the car and get them a shove. But look at this. Wow. For the lead, Shane Meal on the outside, Greg Sachs on the inside, and the car that's a lap down. Kyle Busch on the inside. Man, that's a battle. Yes, it is. Uh, it's pretty stressful right there. Everyone's Whoa. on a different agenda. Brent Sherman also sticks his nose in the air in the Serta number 44. We got them all packed up together. Bobby Gerhardt, the pole sitter, he's trapped in there. But now we got Kyle Busch up in front if that yellow comes out. And it'll be hard for him to get back around Kyle. He's going to have to kind of mess up and let them have too big a hole. And, and it's going to take a couple of them to get a good run at him to do it. 
Right now he's got to have his fingers crossed, his toes crossed. His, well, he can't have his legs crossed, but. But he's also got a full tank of fuel and 40 something laps to get that yellow flag. Check out that Chad Blunt there in that silver number 64. We spoke about him earlier in the show. Of course, he replaced his girlfriend in that car in a soap opera type deal. Do you think it's going to be a good Valentine's Day for them? Oh, I, I don't think I'd want, I don't think I'd be. Daytona is stressful enough without having those kind of problems, so I don't think I'd want to be in his shoes right now. Frank Kimmel currently eighth on board with him. You can see Brent Sherman right there battling with him, and right now maybe Frank just playing it safe. What do you think? Well, I think Frank's uh, I think Frank's feeling pretty good that he's got a good car that'll stay up there in that lead group. I know Frank's run the high side. I, I think you get in a little bit less trouble here a lot of times if you stay up on that high side. So. He's, uh, he's looking just to keep himself in a position that he can capitalize on something at the end, but he's got a good car here. You can see that double zero car right there. That's Ed Kennedy, a former modified runner from the Northeast in the Shark Lounge, double zero, and Mike Langston just behind him. Oh, there goes Kennedy. Yep, you know, I think he's gonna be okay here. You see the roof flaps come up, and that yeah. probably helped him a little bit. Yeah, but I tell you what, I was right when you, you know, we went to the double zero car and you were talking. He had those left sides just really flirting with that yellow line. Well, that yellow line, it's, you got to be careful down there. It plays heck with the car and uh, loosen him right up. So Ed Kennedy has some trouble here in the advanced discount auto parts 200. He will certainly get back out on the racetrack, but I'm sure. Things are a little bit puckered up for him right now after yeah, that spin. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a big night at the Shark tonight. <laughs> and how about Kyle Busch? He gets his lap back. Well, he's, he's definitely back in the race where he needed to be. Don't think we can say any more after that comment. Kyle Busch, a lucky dog here at Daytona. He will rejoin the field, and he is back in the running for the victory here at Daytona in the Ditech.com car. Kyle Busch also going to be a rookie contender in the Busch series this year. In the championship team car from uh, last year. Exactly Brian for Vickers Brian Vickers. Car. Let's take a look at what happened to Ed Kennedy and you can point out what you saw. Well, as soon as we get to him there, the world was uh, going along just fine. Um, right up in that lead group. Here it is, that's a black and gold right car. down there. He just goes right around left sides were right down on that line and uh, it just uh, got turned around on it. it happens easy all that blacktop there made it where it was a harmless spin which is definitely good here's another look at it if you're right behind what are you thinking well right there you're thinking oh he's gonna he's gonna slide in so I'm okay but uh, you know for a minute you think oh boy you know he's, you just there's not much you can do you let off the gas a little bit you don't jump on the brakes otherwise you get run over from behind but uh, there's not a whole lot you can do. And a third look at Ed Kennedy's spin. Coming off the third turn here, going into the trioval area. Luckily, he's a-okay in that double zero, the Ralph Solemn car. Now, what he has to be careful about here is you Ooh, see yeah. that left front tire is flat. He needs to make it back around because he's still on the lead lap. Make it back around, make it into the pits before that tire comes apart. And when it comes apart, it will rip the left front fender off that car, and then he's basically done for the day. Uh, I think he's goes. got two two flat front tires there. You can see that fender a flapping already. The green flag when we come back here at Daytona on speed.